How did my totally tubular gamers were back with you guessed it another video thanks for coming back to the channel if you're new here maybe stick around for a while i got a fun video for you today it's gonna be a little different today's list is not the best of the worst of the hardest of no today we're gonna be talking about some new games i've been playing over the last month or so i've had a ton of games sent to me and i've been playing a bunch too and I really want to talk about a lot of these games. I really couldn't come up with a list or topic for every single one individually, and I really did want to talk about some of these games, so I'm just bunching them all together. These are just some of my thoughts on these new games. And so yeah, we're going to go through like a good 10 games. These aren't like in-depth, detailed reviews of every single game. It's just my thoughts, impressions, and how I'm feeling about them. If you all like it, maybe in the future I can do it more often. This is for May 2024. These are some of the games I played over the last month or so. I hope you enjoy. Please like share comment subscribe let me know what you've been playing i'd love to hear it i'm always on the hunt for new games but before we begin i do have to give a shout out to today's sponsor hey yeah you watching the video you notice how i mostly talk about modern games these days well what if i told you you could get a lot of these modern games for relatively cheap well that's where today's sponsor comes in instant gaming instant gaming is a key website where you can save tons on new and older games this isn't some shady back alley website where keys might have fallen off the truck instant gaming prides itself on not just being another key website everything they have is from authorized sellers they even have 24 7 customer support if needed what's even better is this isn't just a bunch of obscure games you and i have never heard of they have big new games here for cheap. Here's Tekken 8 for $38. This game is less than six months old. I paid like $70 for it. Legit, I should have used Instant Gaming. Here's the deluxe edition of Dead Island 2 for $27. I paid double that for this game. You really can save some money here. I provided links down below for a few games and these are personalized links so getting these will support the channel. All you gotta do is make an account and you can start saving some money. Thank you very much to Instant Gaming for sponsoring today's video. And so this first game I wanted to talk about is probably my favorite game of this entire list, and that is Another Crab's Treasure. This one was sent to me by Agro Crab, so major thank you, I really do appreciate it. I was actually pretty excited for this one. I mean, all you really had to say was Crab Souls-like, and I would have taken notice, but after watching the trailer, yeah, I actually was pretty excited for this one, and after playing a good 10 or so hours, I quite enjoy this game. And really, this game has immediately just become one of my favorite Souls-likes. The plot is pretty interesting. You do play as a hermit crab trying to get your shell back, and a bunch of shenanigans happen. A bunch of goalposts get dropped in front of you to get that shell back. But this game's plot, premise, setting, characters, all of that is incredibly charming and cute. I mean, you really just are trying to get your shell back, but apparently there's taxes you've got to pay. There's a bunch of garbage falling into the sea. And they certainly hit you over the head with the environmentalism, but I actually quite like the story. I think all of the characters are really cute the way they interact with the entire world is also relatively cute i mean they think the cereal box actually leads to some treasure but all of that wouldn't mean much if the gameplay was super clunky and crap and unintuitive but that is not this game this is actually an excellent souls like filled with a ton of platforming and unique mechanics of course it's got a bunch of trappings that most souls like have you know when you die you gotta go get your souls back you know the death runs are absolutely here enemies respawn infinitely there's bonfires you've got slow methodical combat but this game actually does do a number of things to really differentiate itself from all the other souls likes the biggest thing is that you are a crab you can put shit on your back and you can use it to your advantage and when i mean shit i really mean like everything like cans bottle caps coffee cups coffee cans a rubik's cube you can even find like keyboard pieces to put on your back you can put so much on your back it's not even funny and every shell air quotes does have a special special move. Some of them, yeah, they're clearly better than others, and some of them are actually pretty creative, like we're able to spin around on it to attack enemies, but it's very cool how each shell has its own unique attributes and moves, and you can block with it, and when you block, it does take damage, and eventually it will break, and so you're constantly switching between shells, using their special moves, figuring out which ones are the best to use for your playstyle, and I really just love how different a lot of these are. Some of them are like crazy different, like the coconut, you can just straight roll around in that, you can turn into the super fast rolling ball and that's actually pretty fun to use but they all have unique abilities and i really did want to try all of them i haven't seen everything yet and i'm excited to see everything as well something else this game does that really no other souls like has done is have a ton of platforming there is a lot of platforming this game really is like a 3d platformer on top of a souls like and it's actually very
very welcoming. I have been waiting forever for a platformer to like merge with a Souls-like. Here we go, we've got it. The platforming is really solid. It makes the level design way more interesting. The level design is actually really awesome in this game because it is underwater in the ocean. Like it's incredibly open. And yeah, sometimes it can be a bit confusing on where you're supposed to go. I mean, sometimes I feel like I do need that yellow paint, but I really love how open the levels feel and just how big they are. They're incredibly expansive and sure, there's not a lot going on in them and at times it can feel a little lifeless, but it's the ocean, man. You want it to feel big and endless. And I think they really nailed that with the level design. I also think the presentation is pretty swell as well. I mean, it is an indie game, so you know, I'm going to give it a lot of leeway. I like the art style. It's got a unique aesthetic and I didn't really have any issues with the frame rate. The game was a bit buggy, especially with a few of the bosses, but nothing game breaking. I'd say my favorite aspects of this game are the level design. I love how open it feels. I love the amount of different shells there are to try. I really do think the combat is solid and the platforming is pretty great. All of this leads to a very unique Souls-like and easily one of the best indie games of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if this is nominated for indie game of the year. Right now it's my favorite. I have not played Animal Well, but right now this is my favorite indie game of the year and it's just been an absolute blast to play and I can't wait to play more of it. And so our next game is a big budget AAA game, and that is Sandland. This game came out a few weeks ago, the same day as Stellar Blade, and I have finished Stellar Blade, so I was like, you know what, let's try Sandland. It was developed by Bandai Namco, and I've played about halfway through it, and I've been enjoying it. The game appears to be one of the last works by Akira Toriyama. He did the art style and the character design, and it looks great. I love how this game looks. It looks very much like Dragon Ball Dragon Quest. It's such a unique style and it just looks really good. The environments look nice as well and never had any issues with the frame rate. When it comes to this game's story, it is pretty unique. Taking place in the apocalypse where there's just absolutely no water like at all. Humans and demons live on this earth and this old man asks these two demons if they want to come find this legendary spring that can allegedly give them infinite water and they go and do it and they go on an adventure and I actually quite like the plot to this one as well. While it does start out simple enough, it quickly evolves into something a lot more and there's actually a lot more depth than meets the eye here. It certainly does have those Dragon Ball or Dragon Quest moments in characters, but I, I relatively do like the story. I like, again, just how much depth there are. I like that the characters evolve and change and get a lot more interesting throughout and I am excited to see where it goes. Maybe it totally drops the ball here, but I doubt it. Our main characters are also pretty likable, so that's always a plus in my book. When it comes to the gameplay, this is a strange one. It's open world and I'd say it's an action RPG with vehicular combat. You play as Beelzebub, our nice little demon friend here, who actually again is pretty likable and you can play as him on foot where there is on foot combat and this plays like a very standard beat em up but a lot of this game sees you in vehicles. There's a number of different vehicle types here and you get into plenty of combat in the vehicles but you also do traversal in these vehicles as well. And so far, at least, I've actually really liked playing around in these vehicles. Some of these vehicles are incredibly powerful. You can really blow some shit up, and you can actually go pretty fast with other ones. I think it's fun to traverse in them. They feel nice. They control well. It is relatively satisfying when you blow up other tanks. And it's been a relatively good time. I also like how different all of the vehicles feel from each other. Like, there's this bike that goes super fast, and you can destroy some stuff, but not really a lot. Then there's, you know, the tank that does a lot of damage. There's this jumping one that allows you to traverse all over the place. I think the vehicles add a unique twist on the gameplay and really keep it from feeling stale because I'll be upfront, the open world is nothing special at all. This is a very generic, plain open world that really doesn't do anything different from any other open world game I've played in the last 10-15 years, but the vehicles keep things interesting, the combat is decent enough, and the story really was captivating enough to the point where, yeah, I want to see this all the way through the end, I want to see what happens, and I do kind of care about these characters, so that's a plus. I'm not going to act like the game play has totally wowed me, the story hasn't blown me away, it's not super emotional or deep, but I'm liking what I'm playing. Again, it's fun, it's pretty mindless, and I wouldn't say this game really brings anything new to the table, the open world or vehicular combat or action RPG table, but I'm still liking what it's doing. I haven't seen a ton of people talking about this, I'm sure in a few years it's totally going to be a hidden gem. Like, it's not amazing, it's not going to blow you away, but it still is a good game, it is good at what it does, and it does have a unique personality and charm to it. And at the very least, it's been a memorable time. And so our next game is definitely a strange one, not one I expected to be playing, but they sent the game, so thank you to the publisher, and that is Rainbow Cotton. Now, this was originally a Dreamcast game that never made it over stateside, but this is the remaster for the entire world. So what exactly is this game? This is a shoot 'em up, but it is also known as a cute 'em up. 
Now, I had never heard of a cute em up before, but I guess it's like a cute shoot em up, which this game absolutely is. I mean, it has that Dreamcast aesthetic still. It has been touched up a bit, but you can immediately tell that, yes, it is a very cute game, and it also is a relatively basic 3D shoot em up. If you've ever played like Panzer Dragoon or even Space Harrier, then you'll understand how this gameplay works. You pretty much just shoot everything on screen. There's around five or so levels, there's a boss at the end of every level, and you really, again, just shoot everything on screen. It's a decent shoot 'em up but I'm not going to act like this is one of the best ones I've ever played. The character's a little too big for the screen, and I did actually have trouble seeing things several times. There's also like this auto-adjust that keeps happening, I'm not really sure what it is, but it just made the shooting feel kind of awkward at times, and I felt really imprecise. Like, it's alright when there's a ton of stuff on screen and you're just kind of shooting everything, but when you need to like pinpoint on something or you need to shoot something really specific it can be really awkward and I just never really got all that used to it the game is under two hours long as well so maybe I just didn't put enough time into it to really get used to it but the controls they were just kind of weird in this game something I can absolutely give this game though is the soundtrack the soundtrack is fantastic I immediately was like wow this is really good actually and yeah I really do like the aesthetic I feel quite nostalgic for games that look like this I mean I love Sonic Adventure and plenty of other Dreamcast games and playing this it was like some forgotten Dreamcast game I had never played so that is pretty cool I'm not gonna act like this game is amazing I don't play a ton of shoot 'em ups let alone 3d shoot 'em ups and it was just all right interesting enough game though oh yeah and as for the plot I really couldn't tell you what was going on here there's a bunch of almost naked fairies and then this girl riding around on like a broomstick shooting thing you got me I really don't know and so this next game is definitely a game I want to put some more time in, but I just wanted to share my initial thoughts, impressions, and that is Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. This was sent to me, so thank you to the publisher, and I've put a decent amount of time into this one, but again, I really do want to put some more time into this, because I actually am very much enjoying it. I will preface, I did not play any of the Sekoden games. I've been really meaning to play the Suikoden games, one day I will, but I just haven't yet, so I was going into this pretty fresh, but I've been enjoying it. It's a turn-based RPG with an interesting enough plot and you get a ton of party members like there is a lot of party members everyone is like voice acted as well which was crazy for me and yeah it's been a pretty fun little JRPG it actually really does remind me of JRPGs from like the PS2 era it feels like a PS2 era JRPG in many ways and I mean that as a good thing the game still has some modern sensibilities but it doesn't have all of them it still has plenty of things that would be considered a throwback nowadays I mean the presentation definitely gives off that vibe it tries to do like the HD 2D thing but it doesn't look amazing but this also was a much smaller budget game I mean it was kickstarted so I'm gonna cut it some slack I like how it looks I think the music's actually been very strong in this game and I've been enjoying what I'm playing I think the battle system is decent the story definitely is taking its time so far I'm just kind of like yeah it's all right with our man Noah and joining the watch and them setting up all these political parties and yeah it is very much a political story and usually those kind of turn me off like tactics ogre but I found myself mildly intrigued here and I do want to see where it goes, but yeah, it clearly is one of those that's going to take its time and really simmer before shit hits the fan, and I'm sure it's a good enough story. I just need to give it some more time. As for the battle system, I like how there's six people here, and placement actually does mean something. It appears to be very similar to the Sekoding games. Again, I haven't played any of them, so I'm not going to act like I know what the hell I'm talking about, but from what I've played, I can say this seems like a decent enough battle system. The bosses seem to take a lot of abuse, though. Like, I doubt that was just me. The bosses, they took a lot of punishment here, and I was on some of these, like, 15 minutes, and I wasn't dying and trying over and over. Like, they just take a lot of damage, but the battle system appears to be good, and exploring around seems fine enough. Again, haven't put a ton of time with this one, it's just kind of first thoughts, but I am intrigued enough to the point that I do want to see more, I'm not going to just drop it. Hopefully I get further in this one than I did with Octopath Traveler. Well, hopefully I didn't upset everyone with that one. Our next game is not actually a game, it is a DLC for a game, it is Operation Guns for Vampire Survivors. I've never talked about Vampire Survivors on the channel, but I freaking love this game. I played the shit out of this game, I played way too much of this game. It's one of my favorite indie games ever, it is just beyond addicting, I really could not stop, and this DLC, oh my god man, this DLC is so good. It is Contra themed, they bring a bunch of Contra characters and weapons in, there's two maps, and it is so so much fun. I played like five, six hours of this DLC alone. It is such a great time. You just blow up everything. These weapons are really fun to use. The map is very well designed. There is a ton, like a ton of fan service to Contra that it's not even funny. There's more fan service to Contra in this DLC than what Konami's given us the last like 10, 15 years. It is excellent. 
It is so much fun. You just look at this screen and tell me this doesn't look fun. That's all I really got to say about this. It is way too much fun and I need to play something else. Another game I recently played through was the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. This was TMNT Arcade Wrath of the Mutants. I do want to give a shout out to the publisher for sending me a code. I do appreciate it. And this game was published by Game Mill who put out such fantastic games like the critically acclaimed Avatar Quest for Balance and Kong Skull Island. And thankfully this game is a bit better than those games, but this game isn't exactly going to be winning any awards. It's certainly not the best TMNT game. Uh, it's probably not even in the top 10 to be honest. Like I've played played a good amount of the TMNT games. I really do like some of them. Turtles in Time is fantastic. Hyperstone Heist is great. Shredder's Revenge is just fantastic. This game though, yeah, it, it is none of those. I did play through the game solo. I could not convince anybody to play this game with me. So maybe that's affecting my judgment, but this was just a really short, shallow beat-em-up that wasn't terrible, but it wasn't very good either. It was just kind of in the middle. This game originally came out in 2017. It was developed by Raw Thrills, and it feels like they really just took that arcade game and threw it on a disc. Well, nowadays it might not be a disc, just a digital download, and then they want 30 bucks for it. Raw Thrills also developed Cruise and Blast, and that would be like if they took Cruise and Blast, charge 40 bucks for it, and it's just the arcade game. You'd be done with it in like an hour, but for Cruise and Blast, they actually reused all the other assets and you got a solid four or five hours out of it. This game is not that. You play through it once and it very much feels like an arcade game ported to something else. And while that's not inherently bad and it is very replayable thanks to its short length, I don't think this is going to be a game you want to replay. The combat's not bad, but it's not really all that good either. Like, it's super basic. It's even more basic than other TMNT games. Like, it feels okay, there's a few cool things you can do, but I didn't find it really all that fun, and a lot of the enemies are just annoying. They also all totally gang up on you. Clearly this game was not made for one player. Like it is clear as day they want you to have two, three, maybe even four players, and it probably feels a lot more balanced in the combat. Really does feel like it was designed for more players. It's simplistic and easy to understand because it's an arcade game, but when you're playing by yourself at home, I might add, yeah, the combat really just doesn't stick. Look, it's not the worst combat I've ever seen from a TMNT game, but it's no Nowhere near the best from a beat em up game. Like, it's just so simplistic, and the game doesn't really ever mix things up. The enemy roster is very limited, and fighting them just never really was all that engaging. The levels don't do anything to interest you and really don't have an original bone in its body. Like every single theme, area, level, they've all been done in other TMNT games and they were better, I might add. They were more fun, they felt fresh, the combat was better, the music was better, they were just better games. The game isn't the worst beat em up I've ever played and it's not the worst TMNT game I've ever played, but I don't even think I could recommend this game to the most diehard of TMNT fans. Like maybe when this one is like, five dollars and you've got some buddies and an hour and like 20 minutes of your time yeah you could play worse things you could also totally play shredder's revenge which is like significantly better than this game like it is straight up leagues better than this game with better combat better visuals amazing music like that is a fantastic game this game not so much. I'm just kind of confused why it even came out now. I mean, originally it came out seven years ago. I don't think people were chomping at the bit to play this one, and I don't think people are going to be chomping at the bit to play it now. But hey, it's a hell of a lot better than the usual garbage Game Mill puts out, so... That's good. While I couldn't get anybody to play TMNT with me, I have actually been playing a multiplayer game as of late, and that is Sea of Thieves. I do want to give a shout out to Rare for sending me a code. The game is now available on PlayStation, which is still pretty surprising to me, but it is what it is. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to tell you what I've been doing in Sea of Thieves. This is actually a pretty fun little multiplayer game. I don't really like live service games, but I've been having fun with this one. Earlier this year, I did play Skull and Bones. Ubisoft sent that one, and I wanted to do like a review or a video on it, but man, I just did not like that game like at all. This game is much better and much more what I thought Skull and Bones was going to be where you just explore around this big open world looking for treasure, getting into combat with ships and people and just doing stupid shit and having your own little pirate adventures going titties off the port bow and other dumbass things and yeah, this game has been what I was looking for. It certainly doesn't seem to have a lot of depth and I know some people don't like that Sea of Thieves doesn't really have all that much depth but I'm fine with it as long as I'm having and fun and so far in the like 10 or so hours I've played of the game yeah I've been having a good time just fooling around getting into adventures finding treasure and I actually have been doing the monkey island stuff I love monkey island and so 
playing through all the Monkey Island adventures has been fun. It's cool that Pirates of the Caribbean is there as well, and there really is just a ton here. I was kind of like, holy shit, there is a lot of content to this game. There is hundreds of hours, legit hundreds of hours, if you want to go explore all of the map and go try to find everything, and I'm obviously not going to do that. I don't know how much more I'm going to play of this game, but I have been having fun with Sea of Thieves. I did not check it out when it originally came out. I was like, it looks pretty basic, and I don't really care for the multiplayer focus. I'm always a more of a single player kind of guy. And yeah, the game still is very much a multiplayer focused game, but I actually have people to play it with, so I have been having fun. And it's clear a lot of other people have been as well. I mean, we're going on many years now. We're on season 12 now. So yeah, clearly a lot of people have fun with Sea of Thieves. I'm not going to act like it has the most advanced gameplay or there's like a ton of gameplay hooks, but just having fun, doing your own thing, making your own adventures and moments while looking for treasure and getting into fights and doing little stories. Yeah, it's a good time. I also like the freedom this game gives you. There isn't a bunch of objective markers. It's not super obvious where you need to go or what you are supposed to do. They really just kind of leave you to your own devices and are like, figure it out. And I actually thought that was pretty cool. The other thing I do want to throw out there is I really do love how this game looks. Like, YouTube really doesn't do this game justice. Like, I'd seen plenty of videos on it, but actually playing it myself was something different. This is a gorgeous game. I love the art style. It's so vibrant and pretty, and sure, it isn't the most graphically intensive or advanced game, but I really love how this game looks, and the music, when it does show up, it's actually good, and it reminds me of old Rareware games, which is, you know, only a good thing. Obviously, I wish they were making plenty of other things instead of this, but at least what they've been working on for seemingly like a decade now is actually a good game. Oh yeah, and that Monkey Island stuff, it is actually pretty good. There's a ton of fan service. I really love the voice acting and the story of that. That has been more than solid enough, and it has kept me very entertained. Sea of Thieves obviously is not for everybody, especially if you're a single player player person, but from what I've played, yeah, it's a fun time. I'm not going to act like it's the best live service game I've ever played, but there are very few live service games I genuinely enjoy. There is certainly a lot more that I dislike than I like, and yeah, I actually like this one. And oh yeah, way better than Skull and Bones. Do not play Skull and Bones, play this instead. Another multiplayer game that I've been having some fun with is a game that I had not even heard of like a week ago, and that is Rabbit in Steel. One of my friends let me know about this one, and the developer was nice enough to send a key, so thank you very much. I've actually been having quite a bit of fun with this one. It's kind of hard to describe, so I'm going to read the Steam description, pardon my laziness. Rabbit in Steel is a co-op action roguelike that recreates the essence of high-level MMO rating in a randomized, simplified, bunny-sized package. And yeah, that's not the worst way to describe it. It is a 2D bullet head action roguelike that goes up to four players where you fight bosses the entire time. These bosses have huge AoEs that need to be dodged. Really, they have a bunch of attacks and it's pretty creative when it comes to dodging these attacks. It's all over the place. I can't even try to describe it to you. Like, just look at the screen and yeah, you'll be dodging stuff and you're constantly whittling away down at the boss's health. These bosses do have a lot of health, so you really will be in these fights for a few minutes at a time and you'll just be trying to dodge everything, but also, you know, do damage like an MMO. You gotta really whittle it down. And there really hasn't been anything else that plays like this. Obviously, you know, it is inspired by MMOs and bullet hells, but I've never seen it come together in a way like this. It has a very unique feel to it. The controls are actually nice, and at first, it takes a while to get used to this game. There is so much shit going on screen, and it can be really easy to lose where your character is, get disoriented, or just really not understand what you're supposed to do, and you're gonna be playing through this game plenty of times if you choose to play it, but I've actually had quite a bit of fun. It is very unique and playing with the boys has been a good time. Sure, they've been low-key carrying me, but I have been having fun. There's a bunch of different classes that have different moves, and these classes are actually really different from each other. I was kind of impressed. So far, I've got like six or seven classes, but I know you can unlock a bunch of others, and with the game being a roguelike, it really wants you to play through the game several times. You can finish a run in under an hour, and while I think it gets pretty challenging, you can make the difficulty get a lot, and I mean a lot harder. And I don't even know if any of my friends have finished down the hardest difficulty because this game, yeah, it gets really hard. Sure, you can get just some really good drops and build a really great character, but like you're going to have to dodge so much stuff and you do so little damage to the boss that you're just there for minutes upon minutes. And yeah, it's not messing around. The aesthetic is really interesting. Like it definitely looks different from most games on the market. But at least them all being rabbits is cute, the character design is cute enough, and the music, 
The music's actually pretty good in this one, and I think the game has more than enough reasons as to why you'd want to replay it with tons of different drops. There's all the classes, you can have some really unique builds, there's a good amount of bosses here, there isn't just the same like dozen bosses over and over, and the order can also be mixed up a little bit, and there's even some bosses that are exclusive to co-op. So if you've got a few buddies, and you're looking for a different kind of bullet hell that plays really nothing like I've ever seen, then this could very well be the game for you. It'll at least give you a few hours of fun and you are supporting a developer directly. This isn't going in some executive's pocket and then they just go lay everyone off. No, this is going directly to the developer and I'm always gonna support that. I think this game is good and different enough from everything else that it is worth playing. All right, and to finish things off, we have a guilty pleasure. We have Neptunia. I like this series, don't ask. I've had the pleasure of having two Neptunia games actually sent to me. Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters, which is coming to Xbox very soon, and the latest in the Neptunia series, Neptunia Game Maker R Evolution. And so again, thank you to the publisher for sending me these. I do like Neptunia. I think I finally made it in the world when they're sending me Neptunia games, but if you don't like Neptunia, well, you could just stop watching the video here. This is all that's left. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Our secret code word is BRICKS, and if you're still here, well, I'm going to tell you all about these two games. So, the first game I tried was Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters, which initially came out about a year ago. But again, it's getting an Xbox release. Now, I know Neptunia, it's not the best series of games. Most of these games are very middling or have some kind of serious flaw. But man, Sisters vs. Sisters, this game, I really did want to like it. It certainly has things going for it, but I really just could not get into this game. The story's actually pretty good. It's pretty funny where phones are taking over and causing the game consoles to not sell well. And it's about Nepgear trying to find Neptune and stop the Trendfluencers as they're called. Yeah, you're trying to stop influencers from pushing their iPhone games pretty much. The characters are cute. The plot is as goofy as ever. The visual novel style cutscenes aren't bad either. It's clearly been upgraded from previous games. The game really isn't that bad looking either. Sure, the frame rate is pretty suspicious, especially since the game doesn't even look amazing, but it's whatever. Most of the music and sound effects are reused, but that's not really new for the series. It's fine. My biggest issue with this game is the gameplay. The gameplay in this game is just not very good. Like, it's worse than the usual Neptunia gameplay. The combat in particular just sucks. It tries to bring the combo and string creating from the Rebirth games, but it puts it into a real-time action setting along with frequently switching between the characters to create chains, but this just does not come together. Creating the combos just doesn't really work for a real-time action game in the combat, it just feels terrible, like positively horrible. I had heard it sucked, but seeing this game in action and playing it are two different things. This is like the worst feeling Neptunia combat, period. It is such a step back from every other game. It's so slow and sluggish, the animations take forever, it's crazy unresponsive, it feels and plays like shit. And even when you start to come to grips with it, the pacing and flow of this combat, it's just awful where you constantly switch, you do a few attacks, then switch again, it's not fun. It feels horrible. The AI are also dumb as shit. They get downed in combat, and when it's down to just one team member, the combat just becomes basically unbearable. The game is also extremely grindy, which is nothing new for the series, but it feels extra egregious since the combat really is just so unenjoyable. The same goes for the dungeons. They're the usual flat, basic, kind of tedious dungeons that the other games have, but they just felt extra long and dull and more annoying thanks to the combat. I like them even less than the basic stuff stuff than from before. You can create discs like other NEP games and this is alright, puts a fun spin on things, but man, I wanted to avoid the combat in this one like the regular nuggets at Wendy's. Spicy nuggets are the only thing I want from Wendy's. Seriously, the gameplay, it really dragged this game down for me. It's like all of the worst elements from the series combined. If the story and characters weren't as good as they are, I would say this is maybe the very worst Neptunia game of them all. It's definitely not one of the best ones, but it really did disappoint me. I wanted to like the game, I like the story, the characters, the vibes, but this gameplay is not it. So yeah, after Sisters vs. Sisters, I didn't have a lot of hope for Game Maker R Evolution since it looked pretty similar, but after playing it, yeah, it is better than Sisters vs. Sisters. The gameplay is quite a bit better. It's still not the best, and it's definitely not one of the best Neptunia games, but the gameplay was not awful. The story is actually pretty entertaining as well, where adult Neptune's in another dimension, and she basically is tasked with reviving a fallen game maker with the help of three different goddesses, who are all based off of failed game consoles, to win the market share of game sales. Yeah, 
It's pretty silly when it comes to the story. You're the CEO, you're trying to make games and get funding and people have to buy it and it's as ridiculous as it sounds. It's the typical goofy Neptunia stuff but now in a game developer setting and it hit a little home for me, I won't lie to you, and parts of me had me rolling my eyes since I have been part of the industry for a few years now, but I still found it relatively entertaining. The characters are very cute. It's cool to see new characters here, new goddesses. And again, the visual novel style cutscenes do look nice. I like how the characters talk. The dialogue, it's as goofy as ever. It's not meant to be taken all that seriously. It's pretty low stakes. And yeah, it is fun still to just kind of turn your brain off and play something that isn't all that serious. When it comes to the gameplay, it's pretty similar to Sisters vs. Sisters, but there have been a few key changes. When it comes to the level design and the dungeons, it is the same shit that it's been for the last 15 years in this series. Very flat, basic, bordering on random generation basic, and yeah, the dungeon design and really the dungeon crawling is nothing special, but it's not the worst thing I've ever played. When it comes to the combat, it's different from Sisters vs. Sisters. You don't make combos or strings here. You really just kind of mash the square button, occasionally press triangle, and you can switch between the characters to do some really basic chains. And while I don't love the basic chains, at least the combat feels okay. It feels better than Sisters vs. Sisters. It isn't crazy clunky. The animations aren't super slow. It's not really sluggish or awkward. It feels like half decent. It still doesn't feel as good as other Neptunia games of real-time combat. Like, how does this feel worse than Hyperdimension Neptunia U Action Unleashed? That game came out almost 10 years ago and it actually felt okay. This does not feel as good as that. The flow isn't great, but it's not horrible. It's a lot better than Sisters vs. Sisters. I wasn't like in pain when I was playing it and the game was not as grindy either. So. That is a good thing. The combat, it could certainly be worse as we've seen in this video, but it's nothing amazing. And after playing so many amazing action RPGs, I'm just kind of like, why am I playing this? But you know, sometimes simplicity really does win. I don't need every single game to be taxing my brain. Sometimes I do want to just turn my brain off and play something chill and easy. And Neptunia has always been perfect for that. This game continues to be that. You do actually get to create games here. There is like a bit of a building management simulation element that very much feels like Yakuza 0 or like a dragon. And when I mean basic, I mean like really basic stuff here. Like there isn't a lot going on here. It's not much of a management game. And really it kind of feels like it shows up randomly whenever you need to do something for the story. And it just feels very disconnected from the dungeon gameplay. I mean, it feels like it's just kind of thrown in there and it's not implemented crazy well and while there is a decent amount of tutorials I still felt like I really had no idea what the fuck I was doing like at all but somehow I was it was working I was getting shares and people were liking my nep game so something was happening right and at least the presentation during all of this was half decent the frame rate kind of sucks though it's barely even 30 and I'm not going to say this game looks amazing but I mean it's got a nice little aesthetic to it. The characters won't shut the fuck up though. You've heard everything these characters have to say in the first like five minutes and it really never ends. It's just talking, talking, talking and I'm just like, dude, please stop. Like, we aren't there yet. We aren't lost. Please stop talking. The characters, they really just did not stop talking. That got annoying. Anyway, do I recommend this game? I mean, if you love Neptunia, you probably already got it. Otherwise, no, not really. I mean, anyone who doesn't like this series is probably going to look at this and go, why on earth are you playing this and not playing other better JRPGs? You know, that's a great question. I don't really have an answer for you. All I can tell you is that's it for this video. If you made it to this part of the video, we have a second code word and that is NEP. Uh, shows you're a real one, I guess. Anyway, hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, holiday, whatever is the closest to you. I will see you all later. Bye-bye now. Stay safe.